So here's what we got. Reed and I have decided that we're going to be building a jib in the shop for him. We're going to be using I-beam that he has in the back. I wish it was pipe. That way we could turn the, the arm that hangs out around the pipe and we could fasten the pipe hard to the ceiling and floor. But since we don't have that, we're going to be working with some limitations here. We're going to be fastening a, a bearing to the top of the I-beam. We're going to be fastening a bearing to the bottom of the I-beam. We're going to be placing those two on the ceiling and the floor. And then the whole crane is going to pivot. So this arm is going to be welded to this. Reed also requested that this arm hang out the garage door so we could pick something outside, swing over, pick up something off the plasma cutter, swing around again, and then service the milling machine that's behind the wall. So there's a lot to do. Cross your fingers that this works. I say we get rolling on building this thing, huh? Here we go. What made you choose Plasma Cam over any other plasma cutters out there, Reed? It was software. The software at the point that I bought this was far superior to anything else out there. I bought the actual Hypertherm PowerMax 65. Uh, it will cut. Uh, three-quarter inch plate with no problem and I just felt at the time that I didn't need to cut anything thicker than that uh, and it really shines uh, you know with cutting anything up to three-quarter. I built a water table for it and a uh, downdraft so you know it's to me it's a clean table it uh, it doesn't dirty up my shop I don't have the smoke uh, none of that stuff. This thing does everything I want it to do. We got the plate. This is the ceiling plate that gets bolted to the roof rafters. And what happens is this is going to be the mount for the top pivot, top pivot pin. And so this is actually going to be sticking down off the roof. And this pin is going to be for the bearing. It'll go something like that. But we need to get it welded to the plate first. And as you can see, Reed machined this nice, beautiful pin for me. And I had to machine this boss on the, on the bottom of it. And what that allows me to do is when I weld it onto this plate here, it doesn't put any stress right here on this pin where the pin meets the weld. Uh, this is eliminating all the stress. Most of the time a pin will crack right at the top of the weld. So this will eliminate that. And I'm just gonna lay it out with this caliper. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna match the, the diameter here, half the diameter I could see where Reed turned it. That way I can center it up, just like that. And he's graciously spotted a hole for me in this plate where the location goes after we've laid it out on the ceiling. So now I can just trace this around. Just like that. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but now I got a guiding line there to uh, be able to center this up. Just like that, boom, we know that's where it's going. And now I'll stick weld it and we'll be good to go.
Now the fun part, about ready to chop off the this last part of this I-beam here. We've accumulated all our bearing widths and thicknesses. And we've allowed some adjustment for the roof load to float. So now it's time to cut it. We've decided on 13 foot six for our length of our trolley beam. And hopefully that will, hopefully, that will clear the air duct for the air removal system for the plasma cutter and then also swing outside the door and give some lifting capabilities outside the door. So we're gonna weld some end caps to it and bolt it to the side of this thing and off we go. We're gonna use one of my favorite tools, this hot saw here, the lop off this I-beam. Every time I use this thing, I picture myself on the stage of an 80s rock concert. Flame shooting out, cue the 80s rock music. Here's the top side of the, the column of the crane. This is the top plate. This is the bearing that sits on top here, it gets bolted in. I've made this nice little notch out to make installation of this column real easy. I just slide this thing, rock it up into the position where that pin hangs down in here. That way there's no fishing of this plate or column into place. This is gonna make erecting this thing a breeze. And then I have to notch out right here in this web of this flange so that uh, it gives clearance for the pin that's hanging down from the ceiling. So let's notch this out first. Let's weld this on, <sighs> drill some holes, off we go. This plate needs to be perpendicular to the sides of this wide flange. As you can see, I just have the square clamps to the edge here, supporting itself with the tabs. So I know it's taking some of the yaw out of it. Now all I gotta do is just put this, in, this plate in here like this. And these two tabs take care of the control. As you can see, I'm perfect over here, perfect over here. Man, I just gotta clamp it, chunk, move it in and out and done. bottom base plate of the post for the crane here and as you can see I have a hole in here the shaft of the bearing comes through the hole I've left myself a quarter of an inch to put a nice fillet weld on the outside because if it's like this a butt weld it's kind of hard to make a, a weld there so this is a planned fillet weld I got to make some clearance in here to the web of this I-beam so I'm just going to take the torch and I'm gonna just make a nice cut out here, something kind of cool looking so that you're able to get a wrench in here. The nut will sit somewhere in there like that. All right, we got the cope out here. This is just the clearance for the bolt hole or for the for the nut so we can get the wrench in here and tighten it. So we got some some clearance. Now we got to weld this base, base plate to it. What it's doing is it's taking up all the misalignment of the butt cut of this I-beam here. I got lots of gaps to fill on both sides, but I'm okay with that. What I want is this plate to be square with the center line and the flange of this I-beam because the bearing is going to be riding here. So it's really important of this orientation. So I, I enjoy having this here hold this plate for me nice and square. Now I can tack it off and pull the square off and off we go. I've got a uh, web stiffener that uh, you need to have for the I-beam and the easiest way to actually make these is to do a tracing. 
So I have a, uh, a digitizing table and I have software that is called Logic Trace. And so I can actually trace this. It puts it into my computer as a DXF and I can import directly into my software for the plasma cam. So what I do is I normally I open up the program. I want to use a lines and arcs. I'll hit the start. And then what I need to do is just make some points. Corner, end of arc, go to an arc. Back to a line. And done. We got the top cap just tapped in here. It's got a, a bearing race seated in here. I'll pull this out before I go to weld it, but I have it in here to show you. We have a taper roller bearing that I've specced out for this. It's able to take a dynamic thrust load, which means like a compression for the weight of the crane and the dynamic load that this crane's gonna seat. So we specced it out for that, okay? The next goes in is this plate right here, the side of the bearing and this surface seats there just like that. This gets welded to the base plate on the floor, okay? And what holds this all together is just this pin. This big pin goes in here just like that. Reads machine this for me. And I'm gonna end up tack welding this into place. And this pin's gonna hold all this assembly all together. And we got a big giant nut that keeps this crane from ever wanting to jump off the off the floor and everything spins and we're golden but now i gotta weld this pin into place and then we'll be able to install this baby we just laid out the whole pattern for the in this flange of this i-beam we're going to be drilling one and a 16th inch holes with this uh, hogan mag drill with a annular cutter it's going to make quick work of drilling these holes uh, through the flange here and this is the connection that's going to hold the arm out so that we're able to remove it and install it anytime we want. It's time for the scariest part of the whole build for me, and it's getting this base plate flange trued up, up and down, angle twist, perpendicular to this I-beam here. And this is the I-beam for the rail that the trolley rides on. This part gets bolted onto the column this has to be perfect because Reed wants this beam to swing outside his garage door and he's given me this much room. So if, if this thing isn't welded perfectly straight and we bolt this flat to the I-beam, it might hit the door, which would then mean we have to put some shims behind it. So, I, but I don't want to put shims if I don't have to. I think that's just a spot for some error. So. This is kind of the way I have it set up. I got the Omega Square again. It's giving me the alignment. You can see I didn't do that good of a job on my cut. I got a 
eighth of an inch gap in there, which is going to be perfect for my for my weld. But I'm pretty sure that I'm square. So cross our fingers that after I'm done welding this thing, we don't get any distortion. And when we go to install it, that we clear the garage door. So take a deep breath, cross our fingers. Mm -hmm. 